Hey man. All right. I don't know what happened. Um, we just found out that it had went out, but um, we're gonna just jump right back into it. Hallelujah. Let's just let's jump right back into it. So we was we was coming out of we was coming out of John, St. John chapter one and twelve. And I'm gonna just read it again real quick. Amen. Because I don't know when it went out, but let's just let's just jump right back into it again. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we believe in his name. We've received him. Guess what? You have the authority and the power now. You have the access. You have the ability to be a son of God, son of the most high, daughter of God, daughter of the most high. He's no longer coming upon them like he did in the old covenant. Now he's allowing himself to, he's coming into us now. He's adopting us in now. He's saying, look, I'm your son. You are, I, I'll be your father, your heavenly father. You're my daughter now. Now, now you're going to allow me to come in so I can teach you my ways, teach you who I am, teach you my character, teach you about life, teach you how to get through life, how to, how to, to walk this thing out called life. Amen. Where you don't have to worry, where you don't have to fret, where you don't have to miss the mark. Hallelujah. You can live a life not missing the mark. Amen. We, you may have missed the mark in some areas. You may have missed the mark up until this point, but you can get to a place in your life where you're not missing the mark, where you are walking in full love. And he's saying, I can teach you that because what? You are a son, you are a daughter. You have the authority to identify with me as a son or a daughter, the creator, the slinger of stars, the creator of heaven and earth. You, you, you can identify with me. Let me be your identity. Don't let where you've missed it identify with you anymore. Don't let your weaknesses identify with you anymore. Let you being a son and a daughter of the most high be your identity. Does, does this make sense? And, and, and as you do that, as you allow your identity to be adjusted, to be shifted, and, and to understanding that I am a son now, I'm a son of the most high. I'm a daughter now. I'm the daughter of the most high. And you keep your focus on that. You keep believing that. Whatever you have to do to, to continue to believe it. Like I say, if you have to give yourself some mental notes, I'll put little sticky notes up and just say, say, Lord, I thank you for being a son. Lord, I thank you for being a daughter. And he's saying, look, I've given you that access. I've given you that authority to be my son. And once you understand that you are a son of the most high, then you understand what has been paid for for you. You also begin to understand what you have access to. Because I am a son, I have access to some things that was paid for by my father. Because I am a daughter, I have access now to some things that was paid for by my father. My father owns it already, so therefore I have access to it. And when I understand who my father is and what he has already paid for and what he has already bought back now, by way of our eldest brother, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, now I understand that I don't have to be asking for anything. I, it keeps me in a place of understanding and being thankful for being and having the ability to have access to those things now because they're paid for. So I, I continuously stay in a place of thanks. So I'm always thanking him. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. A need arises. Father, I thank you. For supplying. Father, I thank you. For the money. Father, I thank you for the door. Father, I thank you for forgiveness. Father, I thank you for the answer. Father, I thank you for the wisdom for the situation. Father, I thank you for the finances. Father, I thank you for the healing. You know, you know, you, you always stay in a place of thanks. Why? Because I understand that he's my father and he's given me the authority, the power to be a son. And I and I and I and I that, that's a privilege. Amen. Because it's a it's a lot of people in the world. Who are not going to actually take that privilege of being a son of the creator of all of heaven and earth. He's given us the access now by way of what he's done by Jesus Christ to be a son. So this is a good one to, to meditate on, uh, to definitely get into your heart, amen, and understanding that you are a son, you are a daughter of the most high. So that's first, that's, that's John. That's John 1 and 12. John 1 and 12. All right. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Hey, man, again, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. 
I'm sorry about that. A little technical difficulty. But we back up and running. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians, we're going to do five and seventeen. Second Corinthians five and seventeen. Watch this. All right. It reads, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Okay. Old things are passed away. Okay. Behold, behold, pay attention now. All things are become new. Oh, this is a very interesting. This is one of my, um, as I like to call them, my totem pole speech. Amen. This is one that I've, I've embedded into my heart and that always tends to come up in situations of lives. This is one that I tend to go back to uh, on a regular basis. Amen. Remembering what? That I'm in Christ. You see, that's something you have to always remember. See, the enemy will try to present and bring about things to make it seem like you're not in. Right? Or that you have to do something to work to get in. But that's not the case. We are in Christ. I'm in Christ now. So that's something you have to always keep at the forefront. Even if you fall short in the area, you got to remember that you're in Christ. And my holiness, my righteousness, uh, the benefits of, of, of being a Christian is not by my marriage. It's not by my works. It's simply off of what he has done for me. So that's something you have to always keep at the forefront, that I am in Christ. Not only that, watch this, is that you're a new creature. And old things may try to pre present themselves. When you're, in the, when you're in the process of becoming a new uh, 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 renewing your mind and, 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 and being uh, not conformed but being transformed man there you sometimes have residue that are that are, that are trying to peek his head up that old man I try to peek his head up and you have to remind yourself you have to keep it in the forefront of your mind that what I'm a new creature I'm a new creature that's something you always remember that's something you always remind yourself of that's something you always keep at the forefront of your mind you will you're forever uh, 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 putting that into your heart you're forever saying that that you are a new creature in Christ. Watch this. So because I'm in him, because I'm a new creature, watch this. Old things are passed away. So, so the old, that old man, that old, that old heart, hallelujah, the old way of thinking, the, the old way of seeing things, the old way of seeing life, the old way of going about life, the old way of dealing with life. See, all of that is all passed away. Watch this one now. Those old emotions. See, those emotions up until the point of me becoming in Christ wasn't my emotions. That thought process up until me getting into Christ wasn't the right thought process. Come on now. The way that I thought about life, the way that I calculated life apart from Christ wasn't the, wasn't the right mindset. Wasn't no, that, was, that was me leaning to my own understanding. He said, look, all of that now has passed away. We're not going back to that anymore. You see, now that you're in me, it's, it's, it's my duty now as a father. Come on, now, let's think about this now. Come on. He, he said the other day, he just said in the other scripture, talk about how, he, how he, we, we, he, we're sons, right? He said he's given us the authority to be sons. So now, now as a father, any good father, it, it, as you come in as a son, he's going to teach you, he's going to train, train you on how to be the, the perfect son. So how to walk this thing out according to his teachings, according to his doctrine, according to his understanding, his wisdom, hallelujah, his common sense, because that common sense up until me being in him is, is a twisted, perverted common sense, right? So now I, I get to walk my life out according to his common sense. I walk my life out according to how he sees it, how he goes about it, right? I no longer go about it my way. It's no longer my life because now he's paid for it now by way of Jesus Christ. So that old stuff, that old way, that old man now it's bad. The one scripture talks about how you put off the old man. You put that off. And it's up to you to do it. It's up to you not to revert back because you can always revert back. But now remember this. If you ever find yourself revert back, it's a decision that you made to revert back. No, nobody, no situation can make you revert back. You, uh, you automatically have to make the decision to say, I'm going to do this. Before you do anything, it's, it's always connected to a decision. It's a choice. And some people say, well, I didn't have a choice. You always have a choice. Now, sometimes the choices you have, you might not like the outcome of some of them, but you always have a choice. You always have a choice. Come on now. And then, and then some choices go. You know, you have to just, you just some, sometimes you put yourself in choices and you're like, God, you know, if I make this, this is going to really 
I'm gonna get the short end of the stick. But sometimes it's best to take the short end of the stick than trying to take the long end and find yourself getting burnt even worse, right? So look, we always have choices. Everything you do is connected to a choice. It's a decision you made. Nobody put no gun to your head and forced you to make that decision, right? And even if a gun is to your head, you still have a choice. You say, well, he had a gun to me. You still have a choice. You still have a choice, right? You just have to make the why. You, you, it's up to you what, what choice you're going to go with, right? So look what he's saying. He's saying, look, all of these old things have passed away. So we need to let them go. We need to release them. We need to relinquish them. Watch this. All things are become new. Everything now has become new. I have a new mind. I have a new heart now. I have new eyes. I'm talking about these eyes. I have new ears now. I start to get a new understanding as I start to continue in his word and become even the more transformed and not conformed or unconformed to this worldly system and how the world sees it. I'm getting transformed now according to what his word says. And everything is going to become new. The way you think as you continue in his word is going to become new. And you start to see life different. Your reality is going to change. The way you go about things are going to change. It's all going to become new. You are going to simply become and be a new people. One apple, one one uh, translation says a new species. Beautiful section is this. And it's all because you're in Christ. It's because you believe that you receive that you are a son. You are a son now. He's giving you the authority to be a son, and I'm a son because of what Christ did. I'm in Christ now. So because I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. Even if I fall short, I'm still a new creature. Me falling short does not negate me being a new creature because I didn't do anything to become this new creature. Everything that I have came to me by way of Jesus Christ. So all of my access, all of my dealings, all of all of my authority comes by way of him. And he never missed the mark. Does this make sense to you? So it's all because of him. And because of him, I'm a new creature, and that has to always be at the forefront. Um, what I think is a new creature. I'm a new creature. I'm a slave to God. You don't let anything speak louder than that. Because life is going to come and present things and try to speak louder than your new identity. You're going to have situations to arise. You're going to have persecution. You're going to have the fire to come try what you're believing. And it's all going to have a voice. It's all going to be trying to speak louder than you being a new creature, than you being in Christ, than you being a new, having, uh, 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 becoming, uh, having, establishing yourself in your new identity. Don't let anything speak louder than your new identity. And if you do fall short, don't let your shortcomings speak louder than your new identity. Does this make sense to you? Come on, you, we, we have to get established in this. Because these are some of the, these are the, these are some of the, what, what I would call, the simple foundations of Christ, of understanding who he is. It's the simple, the simple things that gets you, gets you going. You don't never get rooted and grounded in the fundamentals. You know, when I used to play basketball, we used to always talk about the fundamentals. It's, it's a person that becomes rooted and grounded in the fundamentals of basketball, and, and they're already athletic, they're already talented. It's going to automatically, they're going to automatically going to have a one-up on, on somebody who's just athletic or somebody who's just naturally talented. Because they've allowed themselves to get the fundamentals of that. So this is the same thing with the things of God. You have to get the fundamentals of the things of God. And once you get rooted and grounded in the fundamentals of the things of God, then everything else is just going, it's going to automatically be, it's going to take over automatically. Why? Because I have the fundamentals of how this thing works. The spiritual fundamentals. That's all it is. All right? And that's all he requires for us to do, to get the spiritual fundamentals. And then everything else is just gonna it's gonna it's gonna handle itself because you're gonna have to have this Holy Ghost moving and operating and building on that thing. Look at this is another good one, therefore, that we are in Christ. We are a new creature. Old things passed away. Watch this. All, all, all things are become new. Amen. That's second Corinthians 5 and 17. All right, let's go to Colossians, Colossians 2 and 3. Colossians 2. Okay. 
on the Colossians 2. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 and 10, I'm sorry. Colossians 2 and 10. Colossians 2 and 10. All right, it reads, and oh Lord, look at this one now. And you are complete in him. Watch this, which is the head of all principalities and power. Now watch this. Watch what we say. Now watch this. It says simply this: you are complete in him. You don't know what I done went through. You don't know what, what happened to me. You don't know my experiences. You don't know how they treated me. You know, look, 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 see, see how the enemy is always going to present something else and try to get you focused on other than the fact that you are complete in him. You're complete in him. You're whole. You're whole in him. And how do I know I'm in him? Because it already, we just read the scripture before, say that any man that is in Christ, we're in Christ. How do I know I'm in Christ? But we read the scripture before that. It says, look, for those that have received, for those that have believed, you have the authority to be the son. By way, of, it's, it's by way of Jesus Christ, it's because of what he did. Anybody that believes on him has believed in him, also has, is received of by the Father. It's all about being in him. So if, 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 we, if we have established that we're in him, now watch this. If you truly believe that you're in Christ, if you truly believe that you're a new creature, old things have passed away, all things have become new, watch this. You have to receive this part right here. You have to receive this scripture because it says what? And, and you, you. That's you. He's talking directly to you. Are complete in him. He's talking to me. He said, look, Omar, you are complete in him. You're not missing anything. You're not lacking anything. You're complete. You're made whole already. Regardless of what you experience, regardless of what you may be in right now, in, in your situation right now, you are made whole. You are complete in him. Watch this. Watch this. Which is the head. He's the head. He's the cornerstone. He's the first of many. It starts with him, though. It starts with Jesus Christ. So he's the head. Now, look at this. He's the head of all principalities, and he's the head of all authority and all power. Watch this. And we're in him. Oh, God. Y'all got to see this. So now, if, okay, so it's saying, look, you're complete in him, right? So I'm complete in him. And then he turns around and says, now, the one that you're complete in is the head of all principalities and powers. Okay. So if we're complete in him and we're in him and he's the head, guess what authority you have? Guess what Guess what you have access to? Head, headship over all principalities and power because of what he has. Everything, when you read this Bible and you see that he has it, guess what? You have it. Why? Because I'm in him. And because we are one now, remember we read that last Wednesday? He said, look, he said, his spirit has joined with our spirit, a twain man making one new man. And now that we are one now, everything that he has, we have. So if he is head over all principalities and powers, guess what? I'm head over all principalities and powers because of Jesus Christ. So this is why you're complete in him because nothing can stand in your way. Oh God, that's awesome. That's beautiful. That's amazing. No, no, no spirit can stop you. The only way a spirit can stop you, the only way a spirit can offset you, if you allow it. It's all on what you allow. If you don't ever allow it, guess what? You'll never be stopped. When you understand this right here, the more you get rooted and grounded in this, the more you can walk in this kind of authority. The more you can walk in the power that has made been been, been made available to you by way of Jesus Christ. So watch this. You're complete in him. You don't need anything. You're not lacking anything. You're whole. You're complete. If he, if he says you're complete in him, then you're complete. And guess what? You're in. You're not trying to get in. You're in and you're whole. And you have you have headship over all principalities and powers. Now that's powerful. That's amazing. That's something we all need to know as saints, as believers. That's something we all need to know. That we are in him. We are complete in him. And look, and, and look, and he and he's head. So guess what? I'm head too. You see how this works? Because of who he is and what he's done for us. We're in. All right, now go with me that same book, same book, Colossians, and go to the third chapter. Third chapter. Also, third chapter. 
eighth verse. So over one, one, one book, third chapter, the eighth verse. Now watch this one. Watch this one. But now, when is faith? Faith is always what? Now. Faith is always now. Watch this. So now, now you. Now look. Now, now let's let's read it in, in, in totality, and then we'll come back and break it down. Watch this. So now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. Now hold on. Hold on. Now I just told us that we're complete in him. And we have authority. We have headship over all principalities and all powers. All right. So that's the kind of power you have in you. That's the kind of power that you have operating in you now. So now he's saying, look, now, now you, now who, now who's the, who's the, who's the doer is you. He's putting the thought, cause see, he, see, he's giving you the authority. He just told you, look, you completed me. You have headship over all principalities, all powers. So because I've given you the authority, because I've given you dominion, because I've set you back in the garden as though the fruit has never been ate of. And when he set them in the garden before the fruit was ate of, he blessed them. He gave them authority. He gave them the dominion over all of it, to subdue the earth, over all of the fowl, the fish, the, the cattle, everything that creepeth here on the earth. He gave them authority. And he's saying, now you have authority now. So now, because you have authority, guess what? Now you need to put off all of these. He said, now you put it off. Watch this. He didn't say manage it. Oh, hallelujah. Because see, the worldly system tries to get you to manage it. They try to tell you to go to anger management. Go to anger. You got to manage that. You got to, you got to go on. You got to handle that. You can't allow your emotions to take over you. You got to, you have to get to a place and, and, and control, control your emotions. No, you need to put it off. <laughs> hallelujah. Anger. Hallelujah. You need to put that anger spirit off. You need to put it off. You don't need to allow it to reign with you anymore. Why? Because I'm in him. I'm completing him. I'm a new creature. Anger don't operate here. Let me tell you something. When, when a Christian, a believer, operates in these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication in, in, in your mouth, do you know heaven doesn't even recognize that? That kind of, that, 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 that doesn't even go on in heaven. The angels, they, they don't recognize that. They don't, they don't even know what that is because they don't, they don't even operate in that. He's saying, look, because you're a new creature now, because you're in me now, because you have sonship, because you have authority, because you're complete now, he's saying, look, put off anger, put it on, put it on. Don't even allow yourself to get angry anymore. Don't even let it be named among you, no matter what happens, no matter what they do, no matter how they treat you. Don't even allow yourself to get angry. Look at this, wrath, that strife, fussing, fighting. He said, huh, put that off too. Don't be out there fussing. Don't be out there fighting. Don't be out there giving them a piece of your mind. He said, put that off. Don't manage it. Put it off. Oh, God. Watch this. Malice, blasphemy, filthy communication. What's coming out of your mouth? He said, look. He said, let all of that go. Put it off. Don't allow, don't allow that to reign with you. I don't care what they do. I don't care how they operate. Put it off. And it's your job to do it. So when you find yourself down the road and then you say, you know, they just got up under my skin. It just came out before I knew it. You know why it just came out before you knew it? Because you never put it off. You never you never got into his word to see what he told you. Look, you got the authority to put that off. Now, it's just up to you to put it off. But what we'll do, we'll slip, right? We'll mess up. We think, oh, ooh, that came out before. Lord, help me. Help you. <laughs> I've already helped you. Hallelujah. I sent my son for you. I, with my son, he gave you sonship. He gave you authority to be my son. Hallelujah. You're a new creature in me now. Come on now. I've given you the authority over, over, and headship over all principalities and powers. Now you have authority. You have dominion reigning in you. You have purpose now reigning in you because of what my son did. You don't need no help. You just need to put it off and make a decision that you're going to do it and leave it. Oh God, this is powerful. Come on, saints. You know how many how many angry Christians we have? Come on, people that's that's walking around in wrath, that's fighting and fussing. Come on now, malice. Come on now, the nasty attitude. Come blaspheme. Just it is this just any kind of lies. This lies coming up out your mouth and say, say filthy communication. Just, you just let them rip. You just you just gossip about people. You're tailbearing. You just 
You just always got your mouth on somebody. Somebody do you wrong, you're always fighting back. He said, look, all that right there, put that on. Because that ain't going to do nothing but set you up and open up the door for the enemy to come in and torment you even the more. Anybody, any Christian that's walking in these is tormented. I, you can't show me not one Christian that operates in these and they're not tormented. That brings these, these things right here, operating in this as a Christian, that's a torment. You're tormented. I'm sorry. That devil don't play fair. Come on. Watch this. He's saying, look, put it off. You put it off. Don't be praying to me talking about help. Don't be praying to the Father talking about, Lord, help me. Help me with that. No, put it off. It's up to you. You've already, you're already completing him. You're already whole. You have the authority. All you have to do is make a decision and you say, well, I am, I'm not doing that. Anymore. Lord Jesus, now that slipped out my father. Now I didn't, now I, I thank you for forgiveness, first of all. Thank you that I see that now. I came out before I knew it and I was wrong, Lord. See, that's that's integrity. That's honesty. I was wrong, Lord. Thank you for me seeing that. Lord, I'm putting that off. That is not going to be named among you. I am a representative of who you are. And you are not around here popping off like this. You are not around here letting them rip. You are not around here the filthy communication in your mouth. Come on. He's saying, look, I'm, I'm putting that off, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for me being able to put that off. And you've given me the authority for me being made whole. See, that's how you talk. And then, and then what? You go another day and you slip again. And then you come right back there. Lord, I thank you that I that's that old man trying to come back. But I'm a new creature in you, Lord. And you keep re-edifying this. I mean, you're saying it. It ain't, it ain't. And then you, your mind will say, you lying. You just, you lying because you keep, no, in your heart, in your heart, you, you are sincere. You're pure. You're pure in your heart. You're sincere. You want that change. You want that break. You're going after it. And he's saying, you keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Watch it fall away from you. Come on. Come on. Keep on. Come on. Come on. It happened again. Lord, I'm sorry. Repent and let's go. It happened again, Lord. I'm sorry. Thank you for forgiveness. And keep on rolling. It happened again, Lord. I'm sorry. And then watch this, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank. You. And then one day you're gonna look up, and that thing gonna happen, and it ain't, it ain't gonna go there. Oh, it's awesome. It's so beautiful how He can orchestrate and bring about such an awesome change in you without you even trying to do it. That's the awesomeness of His love. That's amazing that our Father is. It's so awesome. It's it's so easy. Oh, God is so easy. We make it so hard, but it's really not that hard. He he said, he said, look, he wouldn't tell you that his yoke is light. And his, he said, my yoke is, he said, he said, look, all y'all that's heavy and, and labor, come on in, come on in. He said, he said my, my yoke is like my, my, my burden is easy. It's easy. Come on, come on. This thing is easy. It's simple. All we got to do is make a decision. Do you have any of these operating in your life? Watch this. It's up to you to put it off. Just put it off. Put it off. If you don't know how they treated me, put it off. You don't know what they said to me. It's been years and years and years I didn't dealt with this. And I done went through this. Get your eyes off them and put it off and love them. That's it. That's all he has commanded us to do is to love them. That's all we should do. Amen. So this is a good one on huh? Colossians 3 and 8. And 3 and 8. Amen. A couple of more and then we're going to be through. A couple of more and we'll be through. All right. Amen. Let's go to um, First Peter. First Peter. Hallelujah. We're going to go to First Peter three and I'm mean, sorry, First Peter two and nine. First Peter two and nine. Amen. Watch what he says right here. First Peter two and chapter nine. Look what look what the word of God says. But you, you. Talking about you now, you are a chosen, I chose you, a chosen generation. Look at this, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, hallelujah, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said, look, you are chosen. I've chosen you from the foundations of the earth. You are a chosen generation. I've chosen you. Watch this. A royal priesthood. This is how the Father sees you. He's just saying what he sees in you. He's seeing you through the blood. And when he sees you through the blood, look, he sees you as chosen. He said that generation is chosen. Watch this. And it's 
And the reason you chose it, off of one thing and one thing only, because you decided to believe. And because of your belief, he sees you through the blood, he says, oh, oh my chosen. He's a chosen. He's a part of the chosen generation. Guess what? Omar is a follower of the royal priesthood. The royal priesthood? What? I'm royalty? Oh, y'all got to see this. I I'm royalty? The father sees me as royalty? What you say? A holy nation. He looks at us as holy. Without, without me trying to be holy? He sees me through the blood as holy? Could, it, could I be holy because Jesus is holy? Could, could that be it? Oh, come on. We got to see this. What it is, he's look what he's saying. He said, Peculiar, you peculiar, you are going to seem peculiar to the world. You, you, the world is not going to receive you like you would like for them to. But you got to remember, they didn't receive our eldest brother Jesus Christ either. They didn't receive him, they rejected him, they crucified him. What do you think the world's going to do with you? Here you are coming through and you love and you smiling all the time, you ain't never worried about nothing. You're always happy. Your joy is always stirred up. You're always talking about how good your father is. You what? 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 Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody always that happy. Ain't nobody because they don't understand. Because you're peculiar. You understand who you are. You you have identified with him. Look at look how you forever want us to identify with him and identify with the way that he sees us. And he's saying, look, let me show you how I see you. He said, look, you, you, hallelujah, you're chosen. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're peculiar. Oh, don't, don't, don't get mad at people that scoff at you. Don't get mad at people that don't receive you. You talk to them about the Lord, and I want to get that Lord stuff. Get on out my face with that. I ain't trying to hear that. Don't, don't be mad at them. You're peculiar to them. Watch this. That you should show forth, watch this, the praises of him who have called us. He called us out of darkness. We was in darkness at one time myself. Watch this. Into his marvelous light. It's his light that he brought us in. He's the light of the world. He's the light of men, the light that life that uh, for men. It's, it's him. It's because of him. He called us out of it. And now we see it. We, we see it for what it is. Oh my God, he loves me. Oh my God, I don't have to act like that. Oh my God, I don't have to deal with that the rest of my life. I don't have to have an attitude like that. I don't have to respond to life like that anymore because of because of who what you've done, who you are. Oh God, hallelujah, glory to God, amen. As you start to see this, I, you're talking about the clarity that starts to come into your life, the understanding, the wisdom, the peace that starts to come into your life when you start to see yourself as he sees you. Amen. This right here, it, 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 it's amazing. It's, it's beautiful. It's something good to get into your heart and understand that this is how he sees us. And look, he called us out of darkness. And, and he didn't just say, hey, you. Hallelujah. The Bible say, I call you by name. Oh, y'all don't know about Sata. He said, I know your name. Now, come on. I ain't just calling you just to say, hey, hey, you over there. You Hey, Red, Red, he ain't over there doing that. Red, come here, Red. No. He know your name, Omar. Come here. I got something to show you. Let me talk to you. Come walk with me for a while. I see life trying to take you out. Let me show you something. Let me teach you how to really live. For what it is. So when this thing presents itself again, you're not moved. Let me show you how to respond to situations. So when they present themselves to you, you know how to respond huh? like a king's kid. Because look here, Omar, you're royal. Ah, yeah, my son, son. You're a part of the royal priesthood because of my son and his blood that he shed for you. You are a holy nation. You are part of my holy nation. You're peculiar. I'm not a my son, son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're peculiar to men and women who don't understand who I am. So don't get mad at them. Don't get frustrated with them. They don't understand something. They don't know some things that you do. Amen. He has called us out of our into his marvelous life. It's all about him. It's all about him. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is a, that's a good one. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. First, this first Peter, um, chapter two and verse nine. That's 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 a good one. Amen. All right, let's move. Um, first John and three and one. A couple of more, we'll be done for now. First John three and one. Let's see what this says. Oh, okay. Now watch this. This is First John uh, chapter 3 and 1. All right, now watch what this says. It says, behold, okay, uh, remember the sister talked a few Sundays ago talking about behold what behold means? I mean, you got to really pay attention. This is something you need to catch. You need to really look at this. Every time he starts off by behold, he's saying, look, you need to, I'm talking about you. You need to behold to this. Behold. Hallelujah. You mind the sister was breaking it down last Sunday? Behold. Hallelujah. Amen. So look at this. He's saying, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Oh, God. Jesus. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, but it because it knew him not. I like this one. See, this right here will help you people. Once you get, once you understand this scripture right here, and I'm not too about other ones, but this is a this is a good one to just kind of read it and remind it in. This will help you to understand people. This will help you to understand rejection. This will help you to understand why mom and daddy didn't do what mom and daddy did. Some things they didn't understand. There's some things they weren't rooted and grounded in. You see, you see, you can't get mad at mom and daddy, especially if mom and daddy wasn't wasn't connected to some spiritual things. But even if mom and daddy was connected to spiritual things, there's just some things that they just probably just didn't fully understand spiritually. Right? Come on. You, you got to understand that there's just some things that, you, that, you, that your parents probably just didn't fully grasp spiritually. They gave you, they gave you to the best of their ability, to the best of their knowledge. Right? But it, 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 they might have missed it in a couple of places. But that's fine, though, because God will catch you up in, a, in, in the next generation to carry it further, to carry the torch further. To help you to give it to you more clearly, to help you understand it. And then when you have kids and your kids and your kids are carrying it on even further, he'll help them for that time. Because for whatever time my son and my, my, my daughters then will be here and living, he said, What? I'll help them for that time. It'll be something that you I teach them uh, even the more, right? Right? Off of off of how you how you have instilled in them. Look at this. He said, Behold, pay attention to this. The love, the manner of love that the father has bestowed have been has given to us oh god this is love he loved us so he loved us so that that he gave his love bestowed upon us his love that we should be called sons and daughters of god he loved you so much that he wanted you as a son he loved you so much he wants you as a daughter that is his choice it, it pleases him to call you son Remember, remember when, when Jesus was baptized? He said, that's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It, and now he looks at you and he said, that's my son. That's my beloved son. I'm well pleased. That's my beloved daughter. I'm pleased to call them, I call her my daughter. I'm pleased to call him my son. That he will call us the sons of God. Therefore, because of that, because we understand the love that he had for us to adopt us in as sons and daughters. Then he said, watch this. So because of that, therefore, the world knoweth us not. Don't you be mad at what people in the world do to you. They don't know you. Ah, I gotta know something. But you know them. Come on, saints. They don't know you, but you know them. What do you mean I know them? You know them because you know the value and the price that was paid for them. You, you know their purpose. You know destiny is in them. You know what he did for them. You know the value of their life to your father. So that's why, regardless of what the world does, if the world never accepts you, people always reject you. If a person spits in your face, come on, saints. This thing can get, it can get, it can get deep. You get to talking and dealing. You get out there, get to talking about your life and somebody don't like it. And they, and they come up there and they, they spit on your clothes. What you going to do? How you going to respond? You better keep pushing. You better keep moving. You better keep showing the love of God. Come on, saints. This thing, we're only here for a moment. He said, follow peace with all men. It didn't say that man, all men was going to follow peace with you. Some men are going to hate you. Some men are going to maliciously, despitefully, and despise you and, and, and use you and, and attempt to manipulate you. 
That's what some men are going to do. He said, but he said, look what to do with them. He said, bless them, pray for them, cover them, love them that do those things. So he said, look, the world, the world's not going to know you. Why? Because it knew him or Jesus. So it didn't know him. It rejected him. Again, we know what the world did. The world killed him and killed the man that was guiltless, did nothing. And the world killed him. So what, what do you think some of our experiences are going to be? When those, when those uh, crucifying moments come up in your life, learn to deal with them according to how, you, how your example Jesus taught you. You need to find out how he dealt with them. And deal accordingly. And, and let the glory of God resonate. Amen. Does this make sense to you? Come on. This is this is another good one. So behold the love of the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons and the daughters of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. So don't get frustrated when the world does anything. Anybody that's in the world, don't get mad at them saying anything, doing anything, treating you in any kind of way. They are in the world. Don't get mad at them. The world don't know you. They don't know you. Guess what? Don't get mad at them. Make sense? Amen. All right, one more. We're going to be done for you. One more. We're going to be done for you today. Amen. Again, I'm so sorry about what happened with the stream. I don't know what happened, but uh, I'm just glad to get in here so we can finish it up. All right, we're going to Revelations. We're going to do chapter 7 and 12. Revelations chapter 7 and 12 will be our last verse for the day, and I'm going to let you go. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for coming in and something with us. Real quick, a real quick, solid scripture. Something you can always say, something to always boast and glorify who your father is. Watch this. 12th verse, 7th chapter of Revelation 7 and 12. Look what it says. Saying, 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 amen, blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving. And honor and power. You have to be more careful. And might. Look who it is. Be unto our God. How, how, how long? Forever and ever. Amen. I so be it. Come on, saints. Saying. Saying. You don't know what I went through. Saying. Saying. You don't know how they treated me. Say, look, look what you're supposed to be saying, though. Look what you're supposed to be saying. This storm. The Lord, I've been in this storm for a long time. Saying. But what are you saying? What is coming out of your mouth? You've been in that storm. What's coming out of your mouth? You've been in that situation. What's coming out of your mouth? Life has come. What's coming out of your mouth? Somebody has come against you with persecution. What's coming out of your mouth? What are you saying? I think we need to start saying this. Watch this. Saying, amen. Let me tell you something about my mother. My mother used to do that all the time. When you talk to her in certain situations, she'd just say, amen. It's also amen. Amen, baby. Amen. She was the amen lady. Amen. Amen. Look, look what you get it from. The, the word. This is what the word say. Saying, amen. What else? Blessing. Glory. Wisdom. Thanksgiving. Honor. Power. Might. Be unto our God. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 I bless you. I honor you. <laughs> Glory and wisdom. <laughs> might I thank you watch this unto the father all the days of my life forever and ever and ever and ever regardless of what it looks like regardless of what I'm facing with I won't stop praising him I won't stop giving him glory I won't stop magnifying him regardless of how it seems regardless of what I find myself in regardless of how I feel I'm going to give him glory I'm going to magnify him I'm going to lift him up I'm going to hollow his name. I'm going to bless him. I'm going to honor him. I'm going to give him the glory. I don't care what you say. I don't care what it say. I don't care what they say. I will bless him. Hallelujah. I will give him glory. I will honor him. I will magnify him. He's been too good. He's been too awesome. He's been all that to me. That's why I reverence him. 
That's why I give him glory. That's why I can lift my hands in the middle of a problem, in the middle of the storm. I can lift my hands because of his awesomeness. He's incredible. His love has never failed. Glory, blessings to him. Might, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor you. Come on, saints. Power, he's mighty. Come on. Unto who? Unto who? Our father. He said, my father, your father, my God, your God, glory to him, honor to him forever and ever and ever and ever, forever and ever on this side. And when we cross over to be with him, guess what he's going to get? He's going to get glory. He's going to get honor. He's going to get blessing. He's going to get reverence. I'm going to thank him for the authority that he has given to me through his son to walk out this thing called life. I bless you. I bless you. I honor you. I magnify you. A pleasure to take the time to get to know someone like you. Power, might be unto you, Father. Life to power, might, blessing, reverence, be unto you, Father. Situation come, they lie on your power, might, blessing, honor, be unto you, Father. I tell Hey, glory. I'm your kundo bosoto. Hey, I'm not going to let life speak louder than me, giving him glory. I'm going to bless him. I'm going to him. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to lift him up. All the days of my life. Even when my flesh don't feel like it. Flesh go on him. Even when my flesh don't want to give him praise. Spirit man going to give him praise. Come on. Flesh has to abide too with my spirit man. And my spirit man now is, is alive and well. He's going to open up my mouth and I'm going to give him the sacrifice of my lips. And I am going to praise him all the days of my life. He said forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. I don't care what it looks like. I get bad news. Guess what I'm going to say? Amen. Blessing. I bless you. I honor you. A bad report come in. Amen. Say, say what you gonna say. I'm gonna say amen. Bless you. I honor you. I magnify you. I lift you up. I thank you. Power, might go unto you, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Numbers been went up on you. The doctor give you a bad report. But hey, what am I gonna say? Amen. I bless you, Lord. I thank you for the healing right now. We're going to have to let you go. We had to do some cutbacks. Amen. I bless you, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity here. I thank you for the door you're about to open. Situation happened. And we, we just, we just can't, we can't, we can't give you the, we can't give you the loan. Amen. I bless you, Lord. I thank you. It didn't break here, but another the door's going to open somewhere, Lord. I thank you. Y'all see how this works? Now watch this. Oh, God. See, when you have this kind of mindset and this kind of understanding, where, where, where are you going to ever be depressed? <laughs> if, you, if, if no matter what happens in your life, you, you do this. If no matter what happens, good or bad, it happens in your life, you do this. Amen. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I magnify you. I give you the honor. I thank you. Our mighty God you are. Heaven, man. See, automatically, you, you, you know what your mind is doing? You automatically shift in your mind. Instead of going with what's going on, you shift in your mind to, to him. You're putting your focus back on him. You're aligning yourself back up with him. You're giving him the glory because he's he deserves it. He's the only one deserves anything. Let me tell you something. All the days of my life, I won't give him glory. Honor him. I am going to say. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor. How and might be unto, be unto our God, our Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 That's a good, that's a good one. Finish it off.
Hey man, I thank God again for everybody who has um, joined us and has come in and, and uh, went over the scriptures with us. I hope it bless you. I hope it edifies you. Again, I apologize. I don't know what happened, but hey man, I was I'm glad that you was able to get back on here and finish it out. Hey man, um, and y'all be blessed. Let the, go back over these scriptures. Put get them down into your heart and let let the Lord talk to you and, and reveal some things to you. Uh, through his word. Amen. All right, as we depart, let me let's pray and then we'll get you out of here. Father, we thank you. We honor you. <laughs> Blessings unto you, Lord. <laughs> we honor you. We thank you. Power and might unto you, Lord, forever and ever and ever and ever. We thank you for us being able to be in you because of what Jesus Christ has done. And because we are in Christ, Lord, we are a new creature. We thank you for making us new. We thank you for old things passing away. We thank you for all things, all things becoming new. Lord, we thank you that we are complete in you, Lord. We thank you that you've given us the authority and the power and given us headship over all principality, over all power. Father, we thank you for the authority to put off anger, to put off wrath, to put off malice. Hallelujah. And all types of bitterness, hallelujah, blasphemy, and filthy communication. You've given us authority to put it off, Lord, and we put it off tonight, Lord. We put it off, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the love that you've shown toward us to make us and to be able to call us sons, hallelujah. So now we know, we know, we know the world doesn't know us. The world's not going to treat us any kind of way, any different than they treated our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for that understanding. We thank you for the peace. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah. We bless them. Um, amen. So y'all be encouraged. Um, we'll see you again on Sunday, amen, for another uh, uh, beautiful um, sermon coming up this Sunday at 12 o'clock. Uh, if, if you would like to join us, just remember you can register at Salt and Light. SaltandLightCovenant.com, amen, on the contact page, just send us a message, and we'll be more than uh, happy to get you in, and then if you um, want to contact us through our email, SaltandLight700 at gmail.com, you can contact us this is there. You also can contact us on social media, you can contact us um, on Facebook, you can contact us also on YouTube, amen, so um, there are um, multiple ways you can contact us, but for those that have come in, I thank you. Uh, for listening. I, uh, we love you. Uh, my Salt and Light Covenant Church family, I love you. Facebook and social media social media family, I love you. Uh, new visitors and friends and family, we love you. And as we depart, what's his name? Jesus, what's his name? Jesus, what's his name? Jesus, amen. Until next time, you all be blessed in Jesus' name.